Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, the House stands united today in our support of Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. We showed that in the way that we rose to support the Ukrainian ambassador after Prime Minister's questions. And for all the necessary challenge over policy that goes on in this place, we'll show it again this afternoon, because fundamentally, we in this House are agreed that President Putin's ill-conceived enterprise in Ukraine must not and will not succeed. But how we do that, Madam Deputy Speaker, isn't just through sanctions we impose, the military aid we provide, or the breadth of the cultural and diplomatic isolation we secure. As important as all of those things are, it's the beacon of hope we provide, not only for the Ukrainian people, but for the Russian people too. How they would love to have a day where the opposition chooses the topics for debate, immediately after a session in which the legislature, without fear, can challenge the head of government. Indeed, Madam Deputy Speaker, and perhaps no government minister has ever said this from the dispatch spot before, how lucky they are, how lucky we are to have an opposition altogether. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Madam Deputy Speaker, we've grown complacent over that freedom. We don't value it as we should. It's no cliche to remind the House that freedom is not free and that no matter how much we complain about the imperfections in our own politics, people have fought and died so that we can argue in this place and in our national media over whatever we wish. Just give me two seconds. Today in Ukraine, Madam Deputy Speaker, people are fearful that those days may soon be over for them. They know only too well that freedom isn't free. In the lifetime of their most senior citizens, they've lost their freedom and recovered it twice already. It's no wonder that so many thousands of Ukrainian men and women are rallying to the flag to ensure that they don't lose it again. I have to give away. Record. I think the thanks to the Defence Secretary and himself, the Minister, for their actions over the last few weeks. They've, been, they've shown proper leadership on this. Would he support uh, Congressman Jerry Connolly, who's the chair of the, uh, who's the president of the NATO PA, who's arguing now within NATO for a centre for democracy to make exactly the arguments that the Minister is, is, is making, that we actually reinforce amongst our populations the reason why we've got NATO and what it is actually defended. Well, Madam Deputy Speaker, I think I instinctively support the proposition. It, 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 it's extraordinary, and you'll forgive me, Madam Speaker, I know you were keen on brevity, but this is a, a tangent too interesting to miss, frankly. Um, when we came together after the Second World War to bring NATO into being, it went without saying that the freedom the liberty, the democracy that we all enjoyed was something that we should collectively stand for. But I think in the 70 years or so that has passed since, we've forgotten what a luxury that is. We've forgotten how to speak proudly about freedom without being criticised as sort of, you know, as somehow trying to shut down the other side. It just absolutely, Madam Deputy Speaker, I think that there is a market for the West to relearn that we can disagree with each other, each other ferociously. We can have polarised societies in which one side simply can't abide the very existence of the argument of the other, and yet we can still see the good in that and communicate it strongly to those who don't have that luxury. Yeah. Madam Deputy Speaker, in this debate today, we must also be clear who our quarrel is with. When we talk of aggression, deceit and contempt for the international, people, uh, for the international system, we must not talk about Russia. We must talk of Putin and the kleptocrats that surround him. When we talk of who must pay the price for this grotesque violation of international law, we must blame Putin, the Russian elite, the hubris of the Kremlin's military leaders, but again, not the Russian people. We want the Russian people to enjoy the freedom, democracy and security that we've been taking for granted. We want them to know that NATO and the West means them no harm. We are a defensive alliance and we are recasting ourselves for an altogether different future. We were recasting ourselves for an altogether different future until President Putin annexed Crimea and challenged the sovereignty of so many other countries in Eastern Europe and the Caucasus. When President Putin fails, and he eventually will. We look forward to a Euro-Atlantic where Russia and the West of Europe exist as friends and neighbours. 
In the meantime, Madam Deputy Speaker, we stand our ground not to intimidate the Russian people, but to deter their president, who is a bully and has caused too many in our alliance to think that they could be next. Madam Deputy Speaker, I'd